Can you hear me now? Are you lying, people? Okay, we're saying it's better. So the team was Mr. Charlie, who was the project owner, and who uh, so is our IT. So there is our acquisition manager, and, and the list is a lot of them. I am mentioning those few people. I want you to understand that we were the nature of different departments in our project team. How did we manage? They were the event when they were elected. From now onwards, we are eating Alma, we are drinking Alma. That was happening really well. We are meeting twice or four times a week. One meeting is internally with all the team manager, the team members. Then the second one is with the vendor to track our progress. So we had a boot camp that we are reporting our progress or asking our questions that was back and forth that you were doing. It was not an easy journey because it was a, a new thing that comes to us. So definitely we are bound to have milestone challenges that you were experiencing. The sandbox when we log, we log in for the first time, it was only one person who managed to log in. The rest of us could not because we were given 11 usernames with one password. So if you are successfully logged in, someone else cannot log in with that. So it was a challenge. So we had to go back and ask to change, to show us how to change without always calling them or asking them. Then validating the there was another milestone that you were experiencing because we have to validate each and every data that we had. So our books have to be validated, our users have to be validated. So throughout we were experiencing those multi caps. And as we were proceeding with all those challenges and exam certification was also another challenge that comes towards the end. So according to, to Alma, there must be at least one person that is by before you go live so that person can have all the administrative rights. So with us, some of the team members could be not successfully even log in to the exam center so that we can write. We are still struggling and we are hoping because we don't manage one person. The requirements of the vendor at least there must be one person. But with us, we want all the team members to have the certification so that if one is not available, there must be someone else to assist because the journey must continue. Resources were watching lots of videos. That is why we're eating Alma, we are drinking Alma, we are married to Alma because you have to understand what's going on in Alma. And we're doing lots of consultation, not only with the team, the project team, but with the whole our staff that is going to be effect affected. The immediate group. So now and then we will call them and say, look, this is what is happening. What do you think? What do you want to see? What do you want your users to have? So we're also benchmarking with other institutions. Desktop, we don't have to consult you. So we're doing desktop benchmarking too, so that we can be able to customize. Because I don't know they give you a blank check, I can say so. Then you have to customize according to what you prefer and what you need. Yes, yeah, we've got the humanitarian uh, uh, things, but you also have to come up with yours. So we're also 
reading some new guides, consulting their new guides, so that we can continue. As strategists, we're watching videos and doing a lot of consultation, and it was not an individual, because you watch and you understand your own way. Then when you come to the group and say, look, this is how it's done, no, you, you miss interpreted. So that even in our boardroom, we have three screens. So one screen is projected something else that we are busy with, then the other two screens, we are searching and project what we, we are dealing with so that we can fast track. So once we're done with all that, we have to now transfer the skills to our colleagues. So we're doing what we call train the trainer. And it was nothing easy because we are so attached to CL. So now the language of Alpha is totally different to what we are familiar and comfortable with. So it's like you are shaking off our comfort zone to migrate to Alpha. And it was a nice rocky road. Then we have to facilitate and we are still continuing to facilitate those training with our users. Compatible with our staff, they will get along the way through training their users so that they can fully understand what's going on. On the 18th, we were kind of successful to be online. The reason why I'm saying kind of successful, we still got a challenge with our users to log in because our users were comfortable to register with their personal emails, not the UFS emails. So with Alma, we opt to make a mind detail to use your staff email or your student email because of one thing with single sign on so that we are saved and secure. Unfortunately, it's not the vendor's issue. It's not the library issue. It's where we harvesting our data from student services. So now we need to go back and ask them, once you pick a student, you consolidate and send it so that they can update their information. And the other struggle that we experienced is we are migrating all our things like picture, we wanted them to be added there, our archives needed to be there. So it was those struggles that we were dealing with when we were saying successfully we like, but still we have to go back and do those changes. Thank you. Thanks, Nabita. Um, are there any questions, comments? I think it's a little bit that so I think there's no question that you're going to ask that's not a valid question. So if you don't know, please ask, because I think this journey, the way it has put it through, is not as easy as it was. And I think she's actually walked it down. And I think the meetings that were held for the last year was annoying, but fruitful. <laughs> so I think ask the questions. It takes up a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it took away stuff from their normal duties a lot. I'm saying this because um, many of my team members were part of this. So I'm just I'm just saying that the ask the questions was quite very time intensive, uh, and many of the things fell the wayside because. The project was underway. It's a question here. Yeah. But online, please put your comments in. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, questions on the chat. Uh, one second question from UFH Libraries. Uh, afternoon, colleagues. Uh, one second question from UFH Libraries. You were talking about the technical difficulties uh, initially with. Uh, uh, the team members, the initial 11, having their own profiles. Was that from Amr's side or was it from the internal IT system side? And then you also later on spoke about uh, further technical difficulties when your users were trying to log in. Was that a system issue or was it an internal university IT issue? Thank you. Thank you. The first initial problem that we had when we were signing on Sandbox, it was the system issue because you must use one. So it, it does not allow you to log in concurrently. So it must be one user at a time. The second one, when we finally migrated, we validated the information. When the users logged in, because with us, you've got two ways to log in. You log in using your user, your, your email address, or your student number with a zero, because that's how our system. So that the second problem, it was the internal issue, our idea how they are on the student um, profile. How did they capture? Because students, they prefer, remember when they first um, uh, apply at the university, they don't have a student number. They are using their personal. So it, they keep it like that. So now when we're migrating, that was not confirmed. So it created an issue. We have to go back to a student service and ask them, to change the primary image. Uh, it's a follow up to what was asking. In terms of loading the profiles, does the system allow you to also do manual updates? Yes, it does, but it's uh, when we've got a lot of students, so it's going to be uh, too much. That's why we want the vendor to do a batch load and we need to correct. when they harvest so we don't have every time to conduct the student service we can harvest the correct information because in any case all our university systems are mandatory to single sign on for the safety purposes so they have to correct it in, in, in any way thank you and for staff members uh, do you use the same system to upload or to academics and sectors to manual legislation? We are using the same system, so they need to correct it for both students and staff personnel. Hi, Namita. Thanks for the presentation. I've got two questions for you. I might have missed the dates. How long did you have the testing environment before the until August? Because we're doing a lot of testing and step by step. 
because we will do the sandbox. We move from sandbox to a live a production phase, but still suppressed so that we can do, continue doing the testing. Then on um, on the 16th of September, then we have to stop working on the production side so that we can finally migrate to the live current live one because they give you a time frame that you have or you have to do. Every time you have to do a test, then you come back and report to base camp that we did one, two, three. When you have the meeting with the vendor, they open their spreadsheet and check yourself, your, 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 your stages. Are you behind or you, you are on track? So if you are behind, but with us, we're far ahead because we had two meetings that we are having internally and we have things that we have with them on a weekly basis. And we are continuing to have those meetings and testing. When you are having meetings, it's not just a meeting where are there to test something. That is it working according to the way we want? No, we need to do a setup. The setting must change and customize like that. So throughout to continue. Then a week before the 15th of September, we totally have to stop everything because now they are migrating what you said the final product to a line stage. So given that when we live, we continue testing and do screenshots that this is not working according to the way we did when before we did the final stages of production. Thank you. Um, second question. Have you completely moved from Sierra and now that you've done the migration to Alma? Thank you. Thank you. It's Tola Nguyen again from the Investor Hotel. Uh, in terms of work schedules, uh, the project team, did they perform other life and activities while they were working on this project? How was that broken down? That the priority. The project was priority. I can minimize certain things, but we still had to Mary, our, you know, we are calling Alma our husband, our wife, or our kid, because everything we told on set that now you must forget everything that is existing. But yet, that some people complaining because some of the activities were not there. The boardroom was our home away our offices so we're forever because it was our main focus. Remember we we're given a time break from March up until August by September you are nine. So when everything is the secondary, the primary was Alma. So the effort that we put there it was more than what the what was expected from us because we have to abandon of things. Just, just, I think, I think you touched on the library app um, and functionalities in terms of Alma. This is why we, we had to abandon lots of things because we had projected ones. So I see that you are scared. We are running two projected ones. We are running the Alma Primo V as well as the library mobile app that comes with the We had our own one, but now this new one that we are having is part of Alma. So that is why a lot of things, because we have to speak at some point to a smaller group that is going to oversee the library. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hi, it's Amanda from CU2. I would love to know the profiles of the people that you didn't mention in your presentation so that you can also see if we can use different tools. Okay, um, we've got Julia from Acquisition. We have Tadisane from um, Cataloging. Oh, sorry, I swap Julia in the Cataloging. Tadisane is the Acquisition. Suzuki is from Teaching and Learning. Nandita from Digital Scholarship Center. Uh, we've got uh, Ayanda from IT. I add into our, our IT. Voyo is from teacher scholar communications, but different sector. Because with me, I'm part of digitization. Uh, Voyo is a research and scholar communication because we want to migrate also, we integrate um, this space in our university. Thomas is our visual librarian from scholar communications. Joseph from acquisition, Colin was from teaching and learning, situation stuff. So, so he and Colin, but they were doing situation, interlibrary loans, whatever. So that we got our whole team because we had to integrate interlibrary loan as well. So we have that variety of all the representatives that are stakeholders. Then finance was there because we also want to integrate finance, but finance was not active because we discovered that there are certain processes that we can't fully integrate our finance office. So finalize the internal system for finance because the reason why finance was stopped they were busy upgrading the system, so we didn't want to put pressure while they are upgrading the system, even if they the system is upgrading. So it's going to, they need to first upgrade. Otherwise, we are trying to do one stop shop with IMA. I'm also recording from your evening libraries. Um, thank you, Lucita, for your presentation. I would like to know um, were there any cataloging challenges um, that we have experienced when we're migrating? Yeah, there were some they were there but they were not too much because Hulda is our champion so she got everything under control I remember our Hulda it was part of Sierra so we were able to eliminate some things before it happened because she she knew that there was struggle like one, two, three that they were experiencing when they are migrating to Alma. So, yeah, so when we were going to Alma, so some of the things we managed to eliminate. If you are moving to Kusi, if we are we are planning to move to Sierra. Please make sure your cataloger is the expert so that it can be able to eliminate certain things before it frustrates the whole team. So with us, it was fortunately we had um, mentally who was using uh, Alma before we migrate to Alma. So we had those two people that they are the experts, so they were really say no, 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 
this one, I remember we were actually with the letter, my colleague was very arguing with them. So the understanding from Alma, it was something else. So that is why if you earlier on I was saying we had two disciplines. So one project, the description of certain field that you are dealing with. So that by the time we activate, we say yes or no. Alma, you have to sit down and populate each user, the terms, the term of reference of each user in terms of your postgraduate, what are you allowing them? Undergraduate, what are you allowing them to do on the system? All like that. So by the time you are migrating or validating that uh, data, you already set those information. In square and together from 40 again. Um, you mentioned that there were challenges with the integration of the financial systems. Are you using ITS as a university system? And then, do you have any key areas from the challenges that you experienced that were hindering the integration to the financial system? The university itself was changing the finance system. That is why we have to stop and abide integrating the system in all. Because we had to wait for the university to finalize the migration to the system. So we could not run this current. So that is why we just abandoned it to all to migrate, to integrate the. I just want to add, I think we will has to have one of the time with the terminology, the terminology on sphere versus the terminology on almost totally different. So it's to make a matter of unlearning and relearning. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, it's PK from the UFH Library. Um, I have two questions, but the one question that uh, the colleague has already asked. Uh, okay, firstly, I would say congratulations on your incredible success. You really did a good job. Um, I would like to know how reliable is Alma compared to Sierra? Now you put me on the spot. So, uh, can I not answer? Because if I say this one is better than that one, I will be undermining. There are, so it all depends on you what you want. Because with the UFS, they were looking they said they said one size fits all. So we're looking all in one. That is why we migrated. I, unfortunately, I won't be able to, to say which one is which one. It depends on, you, on what you are looking for in life. Thank you. My name is Madame Ramachandra from Univet. I think my question is more or less is because I wanted to know the main reason why you moved from yeah, that's what I decision because one with Alma, we were looking for because we want to track our researchers where they are publishing and what they are using the most to do their publication because with the institutional strategies. So that is why I was running away with the answer because it's a that will be because we are governed by our strategic goals. So, other than that, when it comes to the resources that are giving us headaches, they 
and we are not. But uh, let me stop there. There's the uh, hand on line. Oh, is that online? Can you please go ahead? So you can unmute yourself. Okay, okay, good, 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 good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is Mosam from UNISA. I just want to do a follow up on the mm -hmm. question that uh, was asked the difference between uh, uh, what is good about Alma and uh, uh, against Sierra. You didn't give uh, uh, the proper answer. You said you don't want to undermine. So, my point is, are you saying that means everyone can just uh, if they decide to use continue with Sierra, they can continue with Sierra or they can just choose. Um, I didn't get the answer correctly after that question. Can you maybe please uh, clarify on that one? In a Sierra does not offer what you were looking for, so that is why we migrated from Sierra. Because with us, we were looking for one-stop shop. That's why we have the migrated. And we respond to the from a management perspective. I think it's functionality. You look at functionality, fit for purpose. I think it's, it's just like buying a mobile phone. You upgrade your mobile phone every two years or whatever, you know. So it's it's basically an upgrade and looking at the purpose and functionality to see that it's robust and it meets the emerging needs of users. Thanks. Um, I, I see where you but I can't read it though. I don't know if everybody can read it. Um, he has responded. Alma is a next generation integration that operates on a web service platform, a service provider handles updates and development. This feature open APIs for integration with external systems. Additionally, its analytics capabilities are among the best available. Just part of my question just got answered. <laughs> I wanted to find out. I wanted to find out that initially in the past, with the cataloging errors, it was not easy to pick it up on Alma. Is there now functionality where you can pick up the errors just to control the quality? Yes, I understand that the, the, the mitigations that were done affecting the quality control. Now that it's live, is there another part of the quality that is being controlled or checked? Also, in addition, does Alma offer that type of service? Thank you. Yes, it does. That means it's that that deals with the cataloging. And she can respond online. So she may just respond to the chat. Can you just read it? Unmute yourself and reply to that question. I think she may write it in. But in the meantime, can you just speak to them in the chat? Alma and Promo VE is like Sierra and the Webpack. They go together. Someone is an extra discovery tool to look find it within your, your resources. The analytics is also a key element to Alma. It's something that is missing in Sierra. That's an important comment. The analytics is quite an important thing. So I think that's one of the features that we're looking at as well. Quality checks in Alma is not easy as in benefit. However, is the authorized authorities in the community so please note that we are only a one week old with Alma. Okay. So 
So yeah, I think we make some difference. I think that's the thing is after the session when Navita is here, Zuki is here, people that were part of that of the Tarki. And if you were to engage with them further, or even engage them out of the community, maybe by email, I think it's important. And Hilda is also available if you send me. Maybe the meetup can provide email addresses so that they can engage with the team further. Okay, and I'm going to, I think we exhausted it now. Can we, I think we'll give the last over a chance to speak. Thank you, Narita. Hi, <laughs> hi, everybody. Sorry, I was struggling with uh, my uh, headset. Can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me? I hope you can. I hear you. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Uh, okay. So I was having my little bit of fight with my headset. Uh, so okay. Uh, I'm. I thought it was really interesting this exchange of experience Hi. around uh, Alma that uh, you just had. I wanted to uh, take advantage of the last uh, uh, minute of this uh, fourth session uh, to uh, present some of uh, uh, the possibilities of the system and that uh, also merges with the last development that we have made inside uh, Alma. And it and this uh, goes in a line with uh, some of uh, the best practice that you may set in place with an open platform like uh, Alma in uh, order to uh, improve and enhance uh, your workflows and uh, your integration with the overall uh, ecosystem that revolves uh, around uh, your uh, library platform and your institution. Uh, in this case, what I wanted to show is uh, a new uh, service that we are bringing to the market. Just a second that, uh, oh, OK. Uh, and let me start sharing my screen. Uh, just a second, this is here and here. Okay. These uh, are the library uh, open workflow. And then this really uh, provides an uh, overall framework where you can uh, develop easier integration and uh, streamline the workflows inside the, uh, the library. Uh, inside uh, Alma, as an open platform, as we were discussing, we already had different integration uh, components. This uh, was done uh, via APIs, and we have seen uh, just uh, before the lunch how uh, API calls are even more than the calls that are made on the library platform itself. And uh, then we have uh, webhooks that are launched when uh, a certain uh, event takes place in uh, uh, Alma. And uh, finally, during the last year, we have been developing uh, cloud apps. Cloud apps are clearly the example of what we mean by best practice and uh, integration, because the, they really uh, provide a tool uh, to streamline some of the workflows. And uh, we have developed so many cloud apps both on uh, our hand uh, from Clarivate and uh, for uh, different uh, customers that are using uh, Alma and that are using uh, cloud apps, for example, for integrating uh, with different uh, local or nationwide systems or just to uh, perform easy tasks. And I, I think one of the quite uh, of the 
web app that the cloud apps that I like better is uh, coping the role of a user. And this is something that has been developed and uh, allows you to copy and match the roles of a user from one user to another. Uh, before those, that cloud app, uh, this was something that could be done, but it was strictly manual. And uh, it is really a best practice to develop a uh, cloud app such as this. But of course, all those pieces of uh, uh, integration components, uh, they come uh, with uh, some coding. So uh, it might be a, a certain workload for an institution to develop and to maintain those cloud apps. Ideally, here we have a scheme of what we want to achieve in terms of uh, the effort uh, that is connected to build, uh, write and maintain a certain functionalities and uh, how complex this functionality is. So uh, what do we want to do? And uh, we thought about what it has already been uh, developed inside uh, Alma. And uh, also we thought about the future possibility for developing uh, new functionalities. And what we want to do is, uh, is ideally work in uh, this space here where we are able to uh, perform and let you develop complex functionalities uh, without the need of uh, experts working on uh, coding for, this person, for these functionalities. So what uh, we want to uh, do with this library open workflow is uh, the fact that we want you to provide with an integration platform. Uh, at the moment, when we want to perform this kind of integration, uh, we are working with these three components that we have seen just before, APIs, webhooks, and cloud apps. And we are connecting uh, those APIs, for example, to export data on Excel, or this API is connected uh, to a cloud app that then will help you perform a simple workflow. And seeing the situation like this is not really complex, but it ends up that uh, building one uh, on top of the other, uh, those kind of integration, the end scenario is something really complex uh, that may uh, really be uh, overwhelming for a single institution. And in this sense, uh, what we are taking to the market is this library open workflow that will provide you an integration layer uh, that will allow you to build these uh, cloud apps and uh, uh, provide automation for those new workflows that you want to develop in a really simplified way. So uh, I can uh, actually show you uh, how this uh, is uh, looking uh, at the moment. Uh, because uh, just give me a second that I find out uh, a good uh, this one. No. Let's uh, use uh, this one, yes. So in this case, I can open up one uh, Alma. And you will see that we have uh, added uh, some new functionality. This functionality is basically uh, divided in uh, two main steps, building the API and then uh, adding uh, the cloud app uh, through uh, the uh, environment inside Alma as a cloud app. Uh, let me put this one in English, just a second, sorry. Okay, we have this. And the very first part is streamlining the creation of this integration. The second part is uh, having you, providing you uh, through the Alma infrastructure, a secure place where only logged in user will be able to access this functionality. If I go to admin here in this Alma, we can see that we now have this library open workflow and I will be able to assess and create new uh, workflows. 
uh, this as, as always a user access where I would be able to work for myself and admin access that will allow me to have an institution wide uh, framework where to work and the possibility of sharing those workflow between Alma users. If I access this, I'm logging in into the uh, environment where I can just start creating my new workflow. Uh, I have uh, some templates that I can use, just like, for example, recommending a book. But I can uh, start a workflow from scratch. I will give you just uh, for the sake of time, just a couple of hints of how this uh, works and uh, an example of one of our templates. When I'm starting, uh, when I'm starting a new workflow, I just need to add a first step, and it's really interesting because uh, it can start uh, after an API call, it can be scheduled, it can be start from a webhook, or for it can be start, of course, manually ad hoc, or for example, after for, for submitting a form. In this case, for example, we might want to uh, create a form where we ask for the user ID and then keep on creating a workflow. So we can add other fields and I can uh, move on uh, from this. Once I created this, I have here my first step. Uh, let's give it a title, uh, user registration. I can see that I have created uh, my text step, sorry, uh, my very simple form here. And I can uh, then following up the process, uh, having the data inserted in this workflow to, uh, for example, here you can see I can create an old flow with the ifs, switch, and other the possible uh, scenarios. Uh, but I can also use this first step, this form that I have created, to uh, launch an API call. Uh, sorry, uh, what, why are get uh, user detail? I'm not the best tapper. So this will allow me to, uh, after this form is completed, to launch an API call. And here, what I need, what I just need to do is entering the data from the form and calling the API. And uh, like this, I can proceed in uh, creating a new workflow that will then be embedded into a uh, uh, cloud app. A nice example that I can show you, uh, if without saving, uh, this, I'm trying to summarize this as much as possible, is uh, this uh, workflow that we have to uh, suggest a book. In this case, we can, for example, uh, enter some data about a user, this data about the user will call an API in Alma that will give us the information about the last flows of this user. We will edit all those fields and then call OpenAI to suggest new possible uh, readings for this uh, user. And this could be embedded into a cloud app that will suggest and recommend books ad hoc into the system. Now, as I was mentioned here, is where we create our API, and here is where the API lives. Basically, thanks to this library open workflow, we can have uh, all the workflow that we have created inserted here. And uh, when I want to launch the API, I will just select my workflow and take it from there. The thing that is important is that in this way, all the information still lives into our secure server. So you won't have the need uh, to step outside the secure uh, environment in uh, Alma. And uh, this is uh, another really important thing that uh, stands as a best practice 
because you will have to be sure that all your data is always secured. And our cloud systems are continuously monitored, are uh, compliant to all the, the strictest ISO standards. So uh, you will need, you will know that every information that is going around the system is going around on the same solid and secure system that you are all already using uh, for uh, Alma. So I do really think that this is a great uh, add-on uh, to uh, what Alma users are using uh, nowadays uh, worldwide and will really create a huge amount of new functionalities and best practice around those two functionalities. And I was really, uh, I'm sorry that this has need to be uh, just summarized in a few minutes, but it's really a powerful tool uh, that we are developing uh, around the overall Alma platform. Now, if it's uh, uh, okay for you, I would take just a couple of minutes. I don't want to, uh, uh, to take some extra time, uh, but I just wanted to uh, show you beside those best practice, some uh, other uh, added value services that we can, uh, you can rely working with uh, Alm. And in this case, since this, uh, I think it's really interesting uh, also in your specific situation, uh, I wanted to uh, show you uh, what we can do in terms of interlibrary loan with uh, our uh, Rapido solutions. Now, I must say that I'm not clear why everything is always in Italian. Besides me being Italian, I thought I was uh, everything in uh, English. But uh, anyway, uh, let me switch back to English and I can explain you uh, briefly how this is working. Uh, Rapido is a solution for ILL that we have developed uh, at Ex Libris during uh, the last years and we are keep on, uh, that we are taking to the market with a uh, great success and it's really being adopted worldwide. And uh, it's a, a fantastic solution because uh, it provides two really important things. It gives uh, universities access, access to a wide community of um, institution uh, working on uh, ILL. It streamlines uh, all the workflows related uh, to interlibrary loan, but uh, also uh, it really offers end user an experience that it's uh, basically, basically in a line uh, with what they are using every uh, day on uh, the internet. Uh, the idea just from the, I'll take it just from the student perspective. The idea is that the student is uh, uh, searching for a title. Sorry, I have. Oh. In this case, this is a, an exact title, so I know the book that I'm looking for. I can find it in my Alma. So the system itself will tell me that I have possibility to find the title if I just expand my research to all the title index that we have in our institution. And in this case, I can go here and find that I actually have the possibility of getting this book and that this book is coming to me from other libraries. Uh, just a second. Okay. And uh, if I click on the result, uh, I have a new window inside Primo that will clearly set the expectation and give me all the information that I need to proceed with my transaction. This is the, the experience that we actually have in Amazon when we are ordering a book and uh, we can find uh, all the details on the different uh, kind of book that I can have. I can have an ebook, I can have a different format of the uh, book itself. And here, I will know that I can get a physical copy of the book and uh, working with the Rapido, I will know that this physical copy will come to me with terms and policies that have been agreed with the Rapido library. So starting just from scratch, I will know that this could be delivered in five days 
and uh, the terms of use for the loan itself will allow me to keep the book for 120 days. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I can just ask for a chapter. And in this case, I'm using a rapid ILL uh, for document delivery mm -hmm. on the back end of the system. And uh, this is a system that is used by uh, almost 700 different libraries worldwide and that uh, guarantees uh, that this chapter will come to me in less than 24 hours via email. So basically here I have all my options clear and I can decide if I need a whole book or just a chapter. And uh, if I just need the whole book, the information that I need to enter is really meaningful. <laughs> Try to keep the request form as lean as possible so the end user could adjust, select a couple of values, and create this purchase request that then would be sent to Alma with all the persistent the metadata, but without the need of uh, adding any uh, information that then might result in errors. The last step is that if I just ordered a digital copy, not only I will receive this via uh, email through a secure link, but also I will be able to track this uh, ILL request uh, via uh, my library card into Alma. And uh, actually, I can uh, even download uh, the book itself directly from here, the book, the digital file itself directly from here. So we know that the email, especially the institutional email, may not be the top priority for students, but here they will have everything inside their uh, own library card for us. So I just told you five minutes. I hope it's uh, OK, but I try to go uh, over uh, at least the main points that I want to make in terms of best practice and the integration and added value service uh, for your uh, for Alma customers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions, comments, online, comments, or questions on the chat? I think there's one question here. Good afternoon, colleagues. This is Nikina. I'm from the University of Maryland. It's not a question, it's just a uh, thing. It's just a statement. We are also using Alma. So I just want to say uh, since we are moving uh, digital, we are moving, we are moving away from maybe from the print or whatever. So Alma is a good system. Uh, I'm looking at uh, its functionalities. There is a lot that we have learned uh, from its functionalities, and uh, you can work well. Uh, let's say you want to see how, how are you using your mind. It has the value of your mind. So it's a good thing. Uh, those who are working with as librarians and also when it, uh, it is user friendly, I would say so. So it's a good system too. I'm also hearing the same sentiment with Nabita, what I was uh, talking about when it said it's a lot of a commitment. If you want to use this uh, uh, system, you must commit yourselves. Like she was saying, they used to have a lot of meetings. They meet, they discuss. That was also happening with us at the University of Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments, questions? I think there's been lots of conversation from the morning, so I think there's many, many take back that you would go back and ponder upon as to 
the system is like whether relevant or not relevant, what are the pros, what are the cons, and as I said earlier, just, just engaging with colleagues that have Alma or the other for that matter, and engaging with them and looking at the project plan that they had in place for this visit. I'm going to ask Rob, Rob, do you have any final comments, or Tommaso, or Tammy, or Sylvia, if you have any final comments? Um, just that uh, we look forward to further engagement with the user community in, in Southern Africa. Uh, whether you're using uh, our, our products or not, whether you're using Sierra, uh, Summon, Alma, Primo, um, or even if you're, you're using a, a different product, we want to hear more from, from the market, from the users about uh, requirements. And uh, we want to help channel your feedback to product management and uh, yeah we hope the community will be active and uh, it's just in uh, other parts of the world we in the user groups meet once or twice a year sometimes with us in attendance sometimes not uh, and, and we want to encourage that in in any way we can but yeah thank you for organizing this one Thanks so I think it was a great opportunity. I mean, I was mm. really glad to talk to you and uh, happy to expand if needed. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah, I think just this was the first time that we have to shape going forward. I think we have to look at a roadmap as to how we want, or in terms of reference for that matter, how we're going to shape this group going forward and how it's given. I'm not sure what the house feels. Linking this to the Riyadh conference, there is a big conference. I don't know how what's the house feels if you have any objections or whether it's working, it works well, that we link it to the Riyadh second conference so that it will be more robust next year. It could be like planning and we will get feedback from you via questionnaire as to what you what you would like to achieve out of this out of this user group, and I think that would be something that you would do in the near future. Ascertain what it is that you want, and this could be an annual thing linked to the ASA, which was the motion that was at the IOG conference. So yeah, so this would be a forerunner. But we could be but we could have webinars and that kind of thing in the year, just to just to keep people abreast of what's going on. So I think that would be a survey that we would we would actually conduct and take it forward. I'm gonna ask Tammy if she'd like to say some final words. And just a very, very big thank you to everybody for joining us and to everybody online. I think at one stage there were about 70 odd people online, which is awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. Tommaso, Caroline, and Rob, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> and yeah, and like you said, if anybody's got any queries or, or wants to do more information, please just come in. I would imagine myself or Sylvia or just drop us an email. Enjoy the layoffs conference, everybody. Thanks, guys. I think, yeah, I think we've had a long day with lots of deliberations, and I think that's something that's that's the fount of the Liazo conference. That's that's the purpose of the Liazo conference. To deliberate and work with it and collaborate with other with other colleagues looking at best practices, and that's the aim of this user group. You want to have a common goal and share our best practices, share ideas as well. Uh, I, yeah, on that note, I'm going to ask Lomseni to come forward and do all the thanks. Lomseni is the, is the librarian of the UNISA Library here. I don't know if you people want to have a tour of the library later on after this user group. I think you're going to take them on the tour. Yeah, so, yeah. 
I, so he will give you the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. I won't be long. I just have about 10 pages. One day I don't know. I promise you, I promise you, I'll be trying to be as quick as I can. I know the weather is not favoring us outside. But colleagues, we will come to uh, the end of the work. At full. In the progress of work, I may say, uh, thank you for trusting his attempt uh, to host this particular uh, workshop. I'm sure we, we learned quite a lot uh, today. Uh, mine is very simple. Firstly, I would like to extend sincere gratitude to Planet Aids for sponsoring this workshop and ensuring that we are all here, we are all present. We get that very important information that will carry out of here to our management and also our staff members to ensure that our library resources are effectively managed and all the services and services that are supposed to be given to our users are properly given. Sincerely gratitude to the units of management for allowing us uh, to move away from our daily operations to be part and parcel of this exciting workshop. To invite my colleagues, it was exciting. We were here yesterday uh, on the Sunday. I did complain that uh, we did not get paid for working on Sundays, but nonetheless, they promised me something. I was I hope you're going to keep to your promises. To the Library Association of South Africa Board, we thank you. To the University of Free State, the multimedia team, thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, to the Minister, Devin Kamba, the venue, the management, thank you so much once again for putting together such an exciting uh, and I think it was a beautiful environment that we were, we were in. It's not cold, it's not hot, it was a problem. Uh, colleagues, online and on site participants, thank you very much. To the organizing team, the committee, we had numerous uh, uh, meetings, online meetings, where we engaged in terms of how are we going to make sure that everything goes according to plan. To our additional guest, thank you very much. Let me just name Mr. Charlie Molepo. Thank you very much, sir. You need to be better the marketing team. Uh, Mr. Lafan Neka, thank you very much. Uh, program director, Robert Lenny, thank you so much, sir. Sammy King and Sylvia, we thank you greatly. We hope the information that uh, was acquired today will assist us in improving our systems and operations and contribute to the efficiency and various organizations, colleagues. To our presenters, we thank you very much. Benedict Tomato, Nambika Mangola, Caroline Tebu, Mr. Neka, who did the opening in the morning. Thank you very much for sharing such wonderful presentations. Colleagues, the presentation will be made available to all of you. Uh, lastly, but definitely not least, as I said, our participants, thank you for putting those questions. I know that because sweating. Uh, yeah, she was. Thank you very much, colleagues. I know the weather was not favorable. Some of you brought on your bikini. Uh, we'll see on Friday. Maybe you might get a chance to, to use it. We hope the information that you, you obtained today will assist in making those well informed acquisition decisions. Thank you so much, colleagues, and may God's ray of light stand upon you. Thank you so much. Excellent. Um, I think tea is being served there. If you want to have tea before you leave, you can have tea. And there is a break for me at the Liazo Conference. will be open so you can register for the Liazo Conference if you want to go register after this. You can your name with the ICT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.